What's going on guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're looking at three unique white balancing techniques. And along with each of those techniques for white balancing, I'll also be showing you a corresponding method for adjusting your exposure. Now there's still countless other ways to accomplish this basic color correction task. These are just the three that I find myself going to most often. So be sure to leave a comment down below letting me know which one's your favorite, or if there's any other methods that you're using that I failed to mention in this video. Also, we recently did a survey and the majority of you, regardless of skill level, are struggling with shot matching, balancing, skin tones, and working with 8-bit footage. So we created a one hour long free training that covers all of this, plus we'll wrap up the training with an extensive Q&A and you'll also get a link to download the practice footage, power grades, and some of our personal LUTs. Guys, this might be one of the most valuable pieces of training content we've put out yet, and you do not have to pay for it. It's 100% free, so don't let yourself miss out on getting signed up in that link down below. And again, you know what to do if you're enjoying the content here on the channel. Please be sure to smash that like button, subscribe to the channel for more awesome tutorials, and hit that bell notification so you don't miss any uploads. Also, be sure to follow us on Instagram and with that, let's roll the intro. Okay, so as I mentioned, we have three different methods we're going to be attacking here today. And to start out, what I'm going to do is just go ahead and build out a simple grade. And by simple, I mean, we're just going to drag a color space transform on this node here. We're going to go ahead and set this up uh, for our footage. And this is a red wide gamut log 3G10 uh, from a red weapon, I believe. And so I'm just going to go ahead and set this up so we have a proper conversion at the end of our node tree. So we're going to go ahead and set our input color space to red wide gamut RGB. Our input gamma is going to be log 3G10. Output color space, pretty simple. We're going to set this to rec 709, if I can find it. And then gamma 2.4 for our output gamma. And just so you know, our color space settings, color management settings, uh, just DaVinci Y RGB and then rec 709 gamma 2.4. Um, basically the same thing we have it set to over here in our output color space and output gamma you could also leave that as use timeline totally up to you i just like to go ahead and set it here as well just so you guys can see uh, exactly the settings i'm using so we've got this set up properly you can leave tone mapping either to davinci or luminance mapping you're not going to notice much of a difference i'm going to leave it as is so we've got that set up i'm going to move this out of the way so we have more space for our node tree although we're only going to have three nodes here and so this is our last node we're going to have this one labeled as cst and i'm going to create two nodes prior you can do that using shift S. And so now we have our CST here and then we're going to have our exposure as our second node. And first is going to be our white balance. Now I usually start with white balance and exposure as my first two things, because you want to correct the image before you go into any grading, but sometimes I'll maybe put a highlights node or a noise reduction node prior to white balance. But other than that, I'm pretty much always starting off with white balance and exposure. Um, keeping that routine, that's, that's going to save you a lot of headache uh, as you move into your grading process, because you're going to be grading a corrected image to start off with. And that's going to lead to more consistent results. So for our white balance and exposure, we have a few different methods we're going to be going through. So as I mentioned, I'm going to be showing you three different ways to adjust your white balance. And none of them is a one size fits all. Really, it's, it's kind of preference based and it's up to you to experiment and see what you like best. Uh, I'm going to explain what makes each method unique and why I prefer one over the other. And also, I don't prefer one over the others all the time. It just depends on what my goal is uh, and what I'm working on. Um, to help explain the difference between each method, I'm also gonna be correcting for exposure here. And I think that's also gonna help demonstrate the potential uh, to mix and match these methods because there's different tools for each, uh, exposure and white balance. They all have their advantages and disadvantages and mixing and matching can sometimes get you the best result possible. I suggest you learn the rules, you start to experiment, and then learn what rules are okay to break and which ones aren't. And in this case, figuring out which tool we want to use for white balance and exposure adjustments, uh, there's not a rule for that. You can use whichever one you prefer and whichever one gets you the better result. So the first tool we're gonna to be using for correcting our exposure and white balance is offset. And you may have heard offset being referred to as printer lights, and it's all the same thing. It's just a direct change to your RGB channels as a whole. And before we actually get into understanding why this tool is effective and what makes it special and unique, I think it's really important that we understand how the tool works. So I'm going to take a pretty good amount of time here just to explain and demonstrate how this tool works. One, when affecting the actual offset of the entire image, which would be the exposure, and then also how affecting the offset of one particular channel functions essentially as a white balance tool. And it, it does so differently than your temperature and tint slider. And again, this just goes into that whole scheme of experimenting and seeing why you may like one tool over another, or why one scenario may call for the use of one tool over another. Uh, if we turn off our CST here, and I make some changes to the offset, and you look at the waveform, 
it's moving just as a whole. It's like as if we grabbed that, that waveform there, that trace, and we just shifted it up and down. We're not really expanding the waveform or introducing any contrast. And you see here, if we're introducing contrast, now we're starting to move that waveform um, and expanding its properties. And this would be a nonlinear adjustment that you're looking at here on the parade, just an example. Now, if we reset this, um, and we, we're gonna go ahead and re-enable that CST. You'll see the adjustments. They're not looking linear after the CST has been applied, but we're operating underneath it, which gives us a very natural and authentic uh, way to adjust exposure. And the same goes for our white balance. So with that same concept in mind, as we adjust the color of our offset here, um, you'll see that all of the changes happen in a one-to-one -one ratio. So our shadows, midtones, and highlights of the red channel are directly proportionally different from the shadows, midtones, and highlights in our green channel as we make these changes. And another way to demonstrate that is if we go into our uh, gradient here, going from zero to 100, and I've got our waveform pulled up over here on the bottom right. If we take our offset and just pull this down, you'll see the entire image is just coming down directly. There's no curve being applied and it is just pulling it straight down or straight up. And so if we take our offset here and we just pull this to red, you'll see that the difference between the RGB channels, that's the three lines we're looking at here, is red, green, and blue. There's a consistent gap from the shadows all the way to the highlights between each curve. An example of a nonlinear adjustment here to the image would be using our gain. If we adjust the gain, you're gonna notice we're not seeing a perfectly linear adjustment. So we'll reset this and we'll go back into our image after that explanation there. So we'll scrub to find a hero frame here. We'll go ahead and enable our CST. And now if we take our offset and we pull this down, operating underneath that contrast curve. This is gonna give us a very nice look to the image, a very clean way to adjust the exposure there. And then same for our white balance. And the white balance here isn't very far off, um, but just to demonstrate how we may go about doing this, you can just take the center point here and move it in whichever direction uh, you need to compensate for, or you can go ahead and go to the bottom three sliders here, which is the RGB channels. And that's gonna be a little more ideal if you're working with a mouse and keyboard, because you can be a little bit more precise and uh, avoid you know, overshooting into one direction. So if it's you know a little bit too cool, we could either take our red gain and bring it up a little bit, or we could take our blue gain and bring this down in our offset. And then you can also adjust the green just to fine tune that point. And that's almost operating as your tint slider. So the second way to adjust our temperature and tint is actually just right there on the temp and tint sliders. And this is also in the primaries wheels. And here, this has its benefits and its drawbacks. We can increase the temperature. We can go way too far. Um, we can just find a sweet spot here and right around 150 isn't too bad. And then for our tent, we can just come down a little bit. I usually like to go too far and then bring it back. And we're really splitting hairs on our tent slider there. Um, but this is also a good method and generally it works fairly well. I tend to lean more towards offset here because if we take our temp slider and we increase it really far, um, we go too heavy with it. Sometimes it can lead to a nice result, but other times you just get this overpowering warm cast. So if I really did want to push it that far in one direction, I still find that using offset tends to give me a better result because we're able to retain more of the colors that were actually recorded um, rather than just push them all to one color. So if we go to our vector scope here, you'll see we still have some color separation using our offset. You see we still have some difference there. There's some of the originality of the colors are still maintained, but if we use our temperature slider, it all just kind of shifts into one hue and that's just really not ideal. Also, you can see how much it saturates the image. So using offset generally gives me a cleaner uh, and more pleasing result. So the next tool to correct white balance and exposure is gonna be in our HDR palette. And this one is probably the most advanced and probably the best math between all the different methods. And that's because the high dynamic range tool can be color space aware. So there's two different ways to inform the high dynamic range palette of which color space you need it to be working in. So the first way is to actually go into your color management settings and in your timeline color space, you can set this to whatever your camera specs are. And here would be red wide gamut log 3G10. And that's going to inform the HDR palette that it's working on a red wide gamut log 3G10 image. The second way is you can actually do it on a node level. So if you want your timeline color space to be Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4, you can just go to these three dots here, select color space, and then hit red wide gamut RGB. And then same for gamma, you're gonna go to red log 3G10 or whatever your camera space settings are. Now right off the bat, that doesn't change anything because we haven't made any adjustments to the HDR palette. But now that it's aware of the kind of footage and the kind of image that it's supposed to be making changes to, the math is accounting for that footage. So any exposure changes are gonna seem very natural because it's almost like changing it in camera. Now it's obviously not better than fixing it on set, but it's about as close as you can get, honestly. So let's go back over into our waveform and you'll see the changes we're making here. 
very natural and very soft changes to the exposure. And you notice as I come down, I think we lose a little bit too much contrast. So I'm gonna come down a little bit here, just where I think it's a, a decent exposure. And then we're gonna go into our contrast settings and we're just gonna increase the contrast slightly. And one thing about the HDR palette is whenever you increase contrast, it does not affect uh, saturation. So typically contrast, as you increase contrast, you'll also see an increase in saturation, but that is not the case in the HDR palette. So we may also wanna increase saturation to compensate for that. That's looking pretty good there. And then we'll come down a little more in exposure and that's not too bad. Now I did notice all of those changes I just made were in the white balance node. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy those changes over to our exposure adjustments. And I'm just gonna do that by clicking and holding alt, dragging it over and then we'll reset this one and rename this node to exposure. So now back in our white balance node, uh, as I mentioned, all of the tools in the HDR palette, they're all color space aware. So it knows what kind of footage it's working on and it knows we need to make temperature and tint adjustments here. So we can just go into our temp slider and this is gonna be different than the temperature and tint slider in the primaries wheels. You see if we increase the temperature here, go too far and then pull it back. And it's looking a little bit too magenta to me as well. So we'll take our tint, pull this towards green. And that's not looking too bad right there. And you may notice there's also a global setting here and that's similar to offset, but it does have its own differences. And I'll demonstrate that by hopping back over into our gradient ramp here. If we take our global adjustments and let's say we just push this to red, You'll notice it's similar to offset, but it's different because it tapers off those changes that it's making uh, all the way into the very deep shadows. So in our true blacks, that global adjustment has no effect on the colors. So bringing that information back over into our main shot here, uh, we affect our global adjustments. You're gonna notice that the shadows tend to stay a little bit more neutral and the majority of the effect is taking place on the midtones and highlights. So also same case here, if you're using a mouse, it's gonna be really difficult to dial that in just clicking this pointer and then moving it around. So again, I recommend using your X and Y coordinates at the bottom here. So by pulling our X axis left, this is gonna make it a little more yellow, which is almost operating as our temperature slider. And then for our tint being magenta or green, you can sort of get that same effect using the Y slider. So this is obviously way too far, but we'll reset this and we'll actually try and do a proper color correction here. So it's a little bit too cool as usual. And we're just gonna go ahead and warm this up a little bit. And then we'll take our Y slider and just kind of plant this where it looks best. So then here again, a very slight change, but it does give us a little bit more natural skin tones and the foliage around her is just kind of popping off the screen a little bit more. So there you have it. That's the three or almost three and a half different methods I have for correcting exposure and white balance in DaVinci Resolve. So that's gonna do it for this one, guys. As Kazi said in the last video, there's never just one way to accomplish any given task in Resolve. It's up to you to experiment and see which one works best for you. Only through repetition and experimentation will you develop the instincts to know which tool to go to and maybe even develop your own solutions to the creative problems that we face. And again, don't forget to check out that link down below to get yourself signed up for the free webinar training. Again, we built this training around the questions that we get asked the most, so I hope to see all of you there. And with that, I will see you in the next one. Oh,